to call them a massive core, or as symbols displaying the intimidating presence and power of the Galactic Empire, still almost feels like an understatement when the topic of stormtroopers comes up. A design intended to subtly remind the eye of the human skeleton, the stormtroopers of the original trilogy, starting with A New Hope, wore a black-fitted bodysuit underneath a white, plastic-like armored suit that covered the majority of the wearer's body minus space to allow mobility or, um, articulation. Including a helmet with a unique design that immediately reminded us of the fear and intimidation the Empire ruled with. But clearly, with a rule that spread far across the galaxy, across a multitude of planets, with a multitude of terrains, it quickly seemed necessary to supply the troopers of the Corps with the appropriate armor or equipment to survive, thrive, and enforce rule in any environment. Well, this resulted in many different types of trooper, from storm to scout to snow to shock, from death to sand to tank to flame, and so on. But for those nice, cozy, tropical beaches out there, yeah, they had those too. These were the shore troopers, visually defined by a sand-colored armor with a red band on their right arm and a light sandy blue paint that can be found in different places on their chest, shoulders, and arms, helping to identify ranking. Though when ranking comes into play, these shore troopers could often be found in charge of groups of regular storm troopers. Audiences were originally introduced to these troopers on a large scale in the epic tale that was Rogue One, with later appearances in The Mandalorian and the recent Disney Plus series Andor. And now, thanks to Hasbro and Target, collectors have another chance to add this standout member of the Stormtrooper Corps to their collections. Hey everyone, my name is Jonathan, aka JK of JK Collects. Remember, I'll be posting new videos at least twice a week, if not more. If that sounds of interest to you, please click that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. Now, in this episode, we are taking a closer look at the Hasbro Black Series 6 inch scale Target exclusive Shore Trooper. Hey everyone, welcome back, and here we have the Shore Trooper. What is this, the second, third time it's been available for people to pick up? I, I think I've seen like there was an archive version, which means it probably came out at one time before. But you know what, that's fine. For people like me, this is my first opportunity because I'm jumping into collecting and hopping into the Black Series. I'd seen them when they came out and I was very interested in it, but I never got into it, but it's exciting to do it now and then I could pick one up. Uh, back on the back, we have that, the, 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 artist rendition of a shore trooper very cool look and it almost looks really neat because it looks kind of like a, a scout trooper but the armor is a little bit different it would be neat to see one in this like either a white or a light gray color that's pretty cool uh, a little bit of information about it over on the side that side window we've got a little bit more of the art so we can see what's going on he's, he's throwing up two fingers to signal people to go that way uh, got his little blaster and everything fading into the red the more like an orangish red reddish orange for andor okay so that's why we get this this reissue because this is for andor as opposed to the uh rogue one which is after andor Gotta love timelines. Uh, this is another one that flew under the radar of the, uh, the plasticless or plastic free packaging. Uh, empty box, out of the way. Top tray, also out of the way. Best Buddy the pamphlet, moving over there for the good old collection. And this one does not come with a lot, right? He's a trooper. What is there to, to really include with a trooper? And it seems like the Black Series don't really have a lot of extra things with them, right? So let's pop them out. Sorry for the loud plastic crinkly. That was almost McFarlane level crinkle. Uh, but hey, nothing was strapped in. So here's our little blaster. We'll start with that. Let's change to manual focus since this guy's kind of little. Uh, I like the coloring of it, right? I like that, that kind of sand color, the, the brownish. To it. It's just different from the standard black rifle or maybe a gray rifle or something like that. It's, it is cast in that uh, sand color and it's just a neat looking little rifle. It's got this flip down bit here and we've got the little bit of black details. So the magazine or, or energy pack, whatever you want to call it. Uh, looks like a little bit of extra black right there. I don't know if it was intended for the, uh, the fixed sights or what. Um, or if it was just a little bit that came over from this piece right here. And then there's a little bit of black right there. So very cool. Uh, nice, just little details on it. I like how compact this thing is. And uh, yeah, so there we go. And I like, I mean, you got the, the slide right there. It's very cool. Very cool. Okay. 
let's move on to the figure because hey, that's it for accessories. Uh, <laughs> not a lot to go through with a trooper, but there is a lot to look at on this guy. Now, I fully accept and realize that this is probably entirely reuse. And uh, if you've been collecting, you probably already have this and I am not telling you anything new, but this is new to me. And if it's new to you, hey, let's go on this journey and adventure together. So here we go. Here is our shore trooper. Love the helmets for these guys, right? They've got these masks, it's like they come down if there's like a, a, a sandstorm or something like that to block it. it definitely looks like it's a, a movable thing. Obviously on this, it, it does not move. We've got that red symbol painted on it. And a little bit of just dirt and grime, right? Because they're they're outside. They're walking on, granted it is a tropical paradise and beaches and whatnot, but they're still walking through dirt and sand. So they're going to get a little bit dirty. They're rugged guys. Their paint's going to get messed up which gives a little bit of freedom for paint error, right? If there's a scratch, big deal. That's probably intentional. But the helmet looks good, right? The 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 visor, the lens looks very well painted. I like the finish of it. Um, it it's a slight gloss to it. Uh, the centerpiece, the breather area, very well applied. I don't really see any issues. Even these black pieces coming down here, there's a little bit right there uh, on this side. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. There's a little bit of... Of, of sloppiness or whatever of the black compared to this other side so but that is at the bottom and if I'm looking at it like this I cannot really tell right so otherwise very cool good details sculpted into it and with it being a trooper helmet there's usually not a whole lot of extra wash or anything like that they applied the dirt um, to it which is just really neat let's check out some mobility here okay so we can immediately see what we're dealing with there. So this is like a solid piece. It's not even the the faux head underneath the helmet or whatever. This is just solid chunk plastic, which probably maybe has always been that way. Neck is attached to the torso, as we can see, but we do have this ball that has a pivot, right? So it's got that hinge in there. So that should give us pretty good movement as far as side to side. Not terrible, right? Um, definitely seen worse, also seen better. But uh, it's a trooper in a helmet, so there's, of course, the helmet's going to get in the way very quickly by hitting the neck, and it can look up, so that's definitely beyond straightforward if we look at the profile. And then down, if we get that hinge to activate, we should have pretty good down mobility, but it does take a little bit for that first... There it goes. So it takes a little bit sometimes for these these hinges and these joints to just immediately flex, especially when it's fresh out of the package. So there we go. We've got at least mask, chin to armor chest, uh, thanks to that movement of the neck. So very good. And of course, it's a little tough to rotate, but there's nothing in the way. It's just the stiffness of the plastic. It's a little cold, but it does have full exorcist rotation. And uh, yeah, a little bit of attitude behind that. Thrilled. Okay, so the uh, shoulder pads, they are a flexible material, so let's see what happens. Yep, so when we bring the arm up, it does flex to go up on top of like the, the, the trapezius area of the shoulder or of this armor. But I don't know if you saw that, it does create a little dimple right there. You can kind of see from the shadow, because it's that rubbery plastic, it creates a dimple. So I'm very curious of how that would make this rubbery plastic behave over time or if it could allow this paint to, to chip off or something like that. No telling, uh, I'm, I'm, the paint, I don't know how uh, flexible that paint can be, but uh, it's just a thing that could be something to look out for. There is no butterfly joint, does have good rotation. Uh, we do not have a bicep tricep rotation. We do have elbow rotation with a single elbow. So uh, that articulation, not so hot. Um, but with that elbow rotation, we don't have a forearm, but we do have good wrist, and we have forward and backward. And we've got this little bit on top of the wrist that is a little bit of a hindrance because it will hit the gauntlet and kind of stop some of the back, but the forward is is very good. It goes just about 90 degrees, okay? And then the other side, same thing with uh, the shoulder pad. Uh, here is our red marker of a pad for the, uh, for the right arm that we mentioned. It kind of helps with some of the uh, ranking and whatnot. Same thing with the hand over here, but this one is a weapon hand, so it does have the up and down instead of the back and forth. No real hindrance there because the uh, the armor piece is, is almost the same all the way around. So there's not really a spot where it's going to hinder. And this bit on the back of the hand doesn't really get in the way because we're going up and down. Okay. 
Uh, mid torso, yeah, pretty good. Uh, we do have full mobility there. Uh, back, a little bit of an arch to it, even with this armor impacting the other armor here in the center. Not bad. Uh, forward, even better. That's that's really impressive because you know you've got armor and you've got all these pieces down here that it can hit. That being said, it'd be something to be mindful for of scratching wear and paint transfer depending on how much it is wiggled around. Now I'm happy to do it just to show and see what it looks like. Uh, but yeah, just something to be careful of. No waist rotation, so we're kind of all getting it in here. Now if I just try and turn like this, it stops pretty hard and you can hear it creaking. So it does take a little bit of shifting around as far as having it spin and rotate. So some waist rotation might have been helpful there. Um, now here, I don't really have a lot of optimism for flexibility, and my optimism is is fairly, I think, accurate because that is what we're looking at of a split. And if I put a lot of effort to it, that's what happens. This is, yes, it is rubbery plastic, but it gets very thick, and you've got a lot of stuff essentially reinforcing it, right? So this pack right here, these four brown things. They provide a little bit of reinforcement as well as this belt part to keep this from flexing very easily, as you can see. Plus, it's also just already thick. And then over here, this holster piece does the same thing. So there's not a lot of room for a split. We do have upper thigh rotation and we do have a double knee, which is good to see. That should help uh, maybe with the ability for him to limber up. Yep. For a good beach jog, he's ready to go. Uh, and then no calf rotation, but let's check out the foot. Uh, forward is, you know, it's pretty flat footed. Uh, back is, wow, that is fantastic. Look at that. So you can get a nice little kick. Yeah, like a rocket. And then ankle breaker, right? So not too bad. And, you know, same flexibility for both legs, as you can see. Paint apps. Let's take a closer look at these, right? So Again, it's uh, there's a little bit of leeway, right? There's there's a lot of room for imperfection. You can tell where there's intended imperfections, right? So this is obviously intended for wear and tear, being on a beach, getting sandblasted all the time, and just rolling around in the sand, all kinds of stuff. It's going to wear some of the paint off, and it's going to make your armor dirty. So there's all that. Was this one intentional? I don't know. Tough to say. It's a darker color, so it looks like it was something struck it, right, and hit it because it's almost like a reddish brown and I don't really see anything else much like it aside from this. Uh, so I don't know if that was intentional, but that's the thing is you, you can't really say because it's supposed to be messed up. Uh, up under here, fairly well done. You can kind of see where it fails a little bit there, but that is the underarm and not off in a place where a lot of uh, viewing happens. So it's usually blocked. It could have used a little bit of detail back here, right? It would be cool to see that. And on these, just something to help make that stuff pop. Kind of like we've got up here, right? So we get the black in there, which is painted okay, but uh, a little uneven or crooked. The lines aren't quite straight. But again, from a distance, yeah, not bad, right? None of this stuff really stands out when you're looking at it and you're going to have it posed somewhere or have it set up for a photo. Now, one thing I see on the belt, these little blocks, the brown definitely popped up on there. It almost looks like it was... Like if I had hand painted it for a custom, because it bled over there uh, beyond that little line, that seam, and also up on the side there. It's like a paintbrush slightly slipped almost. Uh, this is pretty well done. Looks good. There's a lot of cast uh, plastic. These were painted this color, and not horribly. A little bit was missed down there, but again, that's something that you're not really going to easily uh, see. These seem like they maybe could have used uh like it's almost like the color was slightly off from the actual plastic where they painted it see paints slightly darker from the actual plastic color can you see that does that show these also look like they are because yeah they were painted so you can see those are similar but a little bit off from that and in here similar but off no big deal uh it doesn't take away from the figure because they're separate enough that it's not going to really stand out. Uh, all in all, not a bad figure. Uh, it's it's a great troop builder. The shore troopers, when I saw them uh, that very first time in Rogue One, I was like, now these guys are cool. I want to have one at some point. But I, you know, I wasn't really collecting them at that time, so I didn't bother. And then I saw 
some others that had them. I was like, yeah, I wish I'd gotten one of those. And then now I do, thanks to Andor having them back and uh, Black Series never afraid to re-release a figure. So I do appreciate that. And I also appreciate that it stands very well and very easily on its own. That's always a plus for a figure. So there we go. And we'll be right back with some 360s. Okay, and here is our Black Series Shore Trooper. This one's built for the Andor series, but like I said, I imagine it is a just a reissue of the same Shore Trooper we've been receiving. That being said, I uh, thoroughly enjoy it. I think it's a good one. If you were interested in picking one up or you wanted to add some, do some troop building, definitely grab you one. Showing up on the Target shelves, that's actually where I got this one, but I know you can also order it, pre-order it online. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed it. Well, that about does it. Thank you for checking us out as always and for joining us on this collecting journey. We'll look for at least two new videos each week, if not more. And if you got something from today's episode and haven't already done so, please subscribe and click that like button. It would really help us out and it would truly mean a lot to me. And if you'd like to see some more videos, there are a couple of quick links on your screen right now for you to check out. But no matter what, as always, thank you for taking the time. And remember, we are all in this collecting world together. Let's look out for each other. Thanks.